Hi folks, here I am again. Uh, multimeters. Um, you, if you've watched my videos in the past, you've probably seen me use a multimeter uh, a few times when I've been working on a locomotive. Um, and I've often been asked uh, what setting I'm using, what I'm actually doing with it. Um, and recently had a, a, a brief discussion with Charlie McGowan, one of my subscribers, and he has got a, had a couple of locomotives that had problems and I suggested using a multimeter, but he wasn't too sure. Uh, what to do with it, um, and I think that's probably you know true of a lot of people. It may, they maybe buy one of these things and just see all this and just don't quite understand it. And I was one of them. I and I still don't quite understand what everything that this thing does. Um, but I think they're an invaluable tool when you've got a model railway, especially if you're doing any kind of repair work or any kind of diagnostic uh, work on your locomotives or on your layout, you really, really need to use one of these. Um, so I thought I would do a video uh, explaining or demonstrating my understanding of how you use one of these. Um, I'm not an electrical engineer, so I may get something wrong. Um, if so, please just put me right in the comments. I'm sure you, I'm sure you will. Um, but I'm going to show you how I use one of these things for continuity. Uh, measuring resistance, measuring voltage, and measuring current draw. So I'll show you how I, I use this to diagnose a fault with a locomotive and how I would diagnose faults on my layout and stuff. So first off I'm going to talk about continuity. Um, now all multimeters will have a continuity setting. On this one it's here and it'll often have a little speaker icon because most multimeters will have a, an audible alarm for the, the continuity. Now my old one didn't um, this is the one you've probably seen me use in my, my videos, and that's the continuity setting there. But it doesn't have an alarm, and that's not really the best. Um, so I got this one just recently. Uh, it's, I mean, these things are cheap. You can get this. That was ten ninety nine on Amazon, so you don't have to spend a lot of money on them. Um, but it goes beep when you've got continuity, and that's really what you want. You know, if you're working on a locomotive, you don't want to be trying to work the multimeter and look at it to, to see the reading. It's, it's good just to hear it. So let's turn this to continuity, like so. And all continuity does is confirm that you have a circuit. The electricity will be able to get from A to B. So let's have a look at how that would be useful when working on the locomotive. Now this is my class uh, 29 chassis and I'm going to replicate the problem I had with this because I used the multimeter to solve the problem that I had with this locomotive because it wasn't running when I got it. Um, so hopefully it won't run now. So there we go, full power, absolutely nothing. Put a battery on the motor though, and it goes. So there's clearly a problem in current getting from the wheels to the motor, and that's where the multimeter comes in to check for that continuity of current from the track to the motor. So this being a ring field motor, you've got traction tires on, on these wheels here, so they won't be picking up power, so these wheels will pick up power to the chassis here, and these two wheels will pick up power from the other uh, rail of the track. So Put this on the track. Now you don't need the track to be powered for this. I'm going to switch it off because that's not what you're testing. You're not testing the flow of electricity. You're testing the continuity, as in, is there a connection between the wheel and the motor? So it doesn't matter which way around you do it, black or red, doesn't really matter. You just want to test the circuit. So I'm going to touch the wheel here and touch the end of this wire just above this bogey. And we get a beep. So we know that that wheel is picking up current, or will pick up current, to that. Test this wheel, so that's fine. So we want to check that current is going all along this wire, because if it doesn't, then you've got a broken wire. And that's okay. So we know that that wire's okay, we know that these pickups are okay. So we know the problem is not with the front bogey. Uh, so, let's go to the back one and put contact on there and we should get a beep if there's continuity, but we don't. So that tells us there is no current 
from that wheel anyway. Or from that wheel. So electricity is not able to pass from the wheel to this brush. There's something stopping it. So the way this particular ring field motor works, the, the wire from the front pickup connects to here, so that connects directly to this brush. And then there's a contact here that contacts the metal part of the chassis. This contact here. And what had happened with this was that the, this plate was loose. And I don't want to take this entirely apart to show you, but there's a, a little contact just in here. And with that plate being loose, this wasn't coming into contact. So I can demonstrate that with the, the test meter. So if I touch the wheel, do it for this one, and there's nothing. If I press, we get the contact. So we found the problem. It's the bad contact between this uh, terminal to the brush and the contact on the chassis. So all I did to resolve that was to, to drill a hole and screw down to get this plate nice and tight and that resolved the problem. So with continuity you're not only testing that you've got a, you know, a good um, connection from the wheel to the commutator, um, you might also be looking for a short circuit. So you might be looking for continuity where you don't want it. So with this little locomotive here we can turn on the power and it's completely dead and we've clearly got a problem with power getting to the motor. Um, now with a locomotive like this you have pickups on one side so these two wheels will pick up and pass current through the wires to this brush and the other two wheels pass current through the chassis up through the motor to the clip here and down to this brush. And this side of the clip is insulated against this brush. So this brush here, along with this red wire, only gets power from these two pickups. So we'll test continuity on this side first. So we'll touch the wheel there and touching this brush, we should have a beep. There we go. And try this wheel as well. There we go. So power is getting from the, those wheels to the motor and try it on this side. So it is. So power is getting to the motor. So another thing you can do is put the probe actually onto the commutator itself and make sure there's a connection between the commutator and the wheels. Because that's the full circuit, you know, power you know, goes from the wheels to the commutator ultimately. Okay, so if I touch both brushes, I'm getting continuity, and I shouldn't be. We don't want that beeping, we don't want continuity there, uh, that's supposed to be isolated, so that tells me there's a short circuit, so something is bridging the power. Now all I've done here is slipped this insulating sleeve back, um, oops, hang on. Um, just to, to replicate that issue, but if you look at my video um, where I restored the old Triang Jinty, this is the exact problem I had and it's how I resolved it, was to fit a new sleeve um, because these insulating sleeves can sometimes get a bit rotten and they will suddenly start to uh, conduct electricity, not insulate. So I'll put that sleeve back so now we should not have continuity between the two brushes and we don't. No beep, that's what we want and that should now run. There we go. So there we go, that's how you use a test meter. Um, to check the continuity on a locomotive to make sure that power is getting from the wheel to the commutator. Now, different configurations of locomotives will be different. If you look through my videos, I used multimeter on, as I say, that uh, Jinty, I used it on my Class 29. Um, an interesting one was in mainline, mo mainline locomotives where you have the, the split chassis, um, those should be insulated from each other. So if you put the two uh, contacts either side and get a beep, you've got a short circuit. Um, you can also test uh, an armature, um, because strictly speaking, if the armature is good, you should get continuity between the poles. But, so if I touch that pole and that pole, I should get continuity. And touch. So you just go round it, and so long as the poles all connect to each other, 
that should work, providing there's no continuity between the, the actual bar of the armature and the commutator, which there isn't. So that's fine. That tells me that armature will probably work. So you can also use the continuity setting on your multimeter to test your track. Um, now I've actually found a problem on my layout doing this. Um, this little section of track has got a little isolated section here. Um, I'll just test it there, that's fine, so this piece of rail's okay, but as soon as I go past this join, there's nothing. So that tells me that that join's bad. So, quick easy fix is just give it a squeeze, just squeeze the fish plate. and get a better connection. There we go. So there we go. I found a problem with my layout using the test meter. So up to now all I've used is the continuity setting on the multimeter. Um, on your layout on the track it's actually quite useful to use the resistance setting. Um, this is measured in ohms. Um, it goes up to 2 million but I'm going to set it to 200 because we're not dealing with uh, huge numbers on a model railway, so 200 will do. And I'm going to use this to test the resistance of the joins. So just quickly first we'll check the continuity. So we have continuity, but let's switch it to resistance and see what readings we get. So just on a straight piece of track, with the uh, probes about an inch apart, we're getting just under 1 ohm. And that's the same on each part of the track. But if we bridge the joins, so we're going to measure the resistance of the joins. So let's see what we get. So that's uh, about three. So there's more resistance over that join than there is on the straight piece of track. Let's measure this one. So that one's okay. So that join is good. This join has a wee bit of an issue. Now it's still conducting electricity, but there's just a slightly higher uh, level of resistance there. So in theory, you know, a little bit less current is going to go through there. But you, you probably you never notice it. It's very small. Um, but I've seen me do this. Let's just try on this side of the track, see what we get. That's okay. Again, that one's a wee bit high, so maybe that joins a wee bit iffy. Um, but I've seen me do this and uh, get quite a high reading, you know, up to about 15, 16 ohms over the join where it's just under one on the rail. And again, that tells you that uh, your join's not that good. So sort it, give it a squeeze or whatever. But I may actually just give this a wee bit of a squeeze just to see if it does make a difference. And there we are, back down to just over an ohm. So there you go, that's how you would use your multimeter to check your joins in your track. So of course the other thing we can use the multimeter for on the layout is to check the voltage of the track. Um, so I'm going to set this to 200 volts. This is DC voltage here, but we're going to measure uh, DC voltage up to 200 volts. Um, you could probably use 20, it'd be fine, but you know, set it a wee bit higher um, so you're not going to have any reading issues. Uh, we'll turn the power up, just going to turn it halfway round in a forwards direction and put the, the probes on and we get a voltage reading, 10 and a half volts. Turn it up full power and there we go, 17 and a half volts. If I put the probes the other way around you'll get a negative reading. So you know that this is the uh, the positive uh, rail, if you like. So there you go, that's measuring voltage on your track, very simple. So lastly, I'm going to show you how to measure current draw. Now this is a wee bit more complicated, but uh, basically what this will do is measure the amount of amps a locomotive is pulling on the layout. Um, so the first thing we want to do is to pull the red plug out of there and stick it in here. 
into your 1080C it says there. That's that's where you want to put it. Everything else so far, the red plug's been in there, but for this we want to stick it in there. And then we want to take the positive wire from the controller and attach it to the red wire of the meter and the black wire from the meter goes to the wire going to the track. So basically we've uh, put the meter into the live wire of the, the circuit going to the track. And then we want to turn the multimeter to the 10 amp position, that one there where it says 10 amps. Okay, so with a locomotive on the layout, let's turn on the power and you'll see the reading of how many amps it's pulling. So that's on about half power and it's pulling about 0.1 of an amp, 100 milliamps. Back up full power and it's 140 milliamps. So that's the current draw. Um, if I put my hand in front of it, so the locomotive isn't going to move, but the wheels are still going to spin. You'll see you'll get the higher readings, that's 200 milliamps. Now there's a thing called stall current, and that is uh, the maximum amps that your locomotive will, will pull if the, the, the wheels aren't spinning, basically. Uh, for DC guys, doesn't really matter this. But if, if you're a DCC guy and you want to uh, you know, convert a DC locomotive into DCC, fit a chip, you need to know the right size of chip to get. So you need to know the stall current of your locomotive. So basically, basically I'm going to do what I did before, spin the wheels, and then hold the locomotive down so the wheels stop. And then you'll see that reading goes up to 500 milliamps. So that's the stall current. So it can be quite interesting putting a different locomotives on to see what kind of current they draw. So this old Wren locomotive, let's see if I spin the wheels in it. Just over 400 milliamps in the stall current. 720 milliamps. So from one of my oldest locomotives to my newest, this is the J36. So I'm not expecting this to pull too much because the motor should be much more efficient. So with the wheel spinning, that's 220 milliamps and a stall current of 340 milliamps. Let's see what the Cardiff Castle does. Spinning wheels, it's pushing 500 milliamps, stall current. Yeah, hits 600. For DC guys, I think the main reason for uh, testing the current draw of your locomotives is, is to test the efficiency of the motor. If you're, if you're getting a high reading, it probably means, um, well, there's, there's certainly something wrong with the motor, but it's, it's, for an older locomotive, it's probably the magnet needs remagnetized. Um, if it's pulling too many amps, it's just the magnet's not strong enough. But there you go, that's how you measure current draw using a multimeter. Okay, so that is how and why I use a multimeter on my locomotives and on my layout. Um, I say mostly it's the continuity setting I use uh, for, for working on locomotives, but on the layout I will you know check the resistance of my track joints um, and occasionally I've checked the voltage, but more often than not all I'm using the multimeter for is continuity. Um, these things do an awful lot more, but I'm not an electrician, so I'm not going to pretend to know that I understand everything that this thing does. But uh, I hope some of you found that a little bit helpful and uh, I'll see you soon. I'm not quite sure when my next repair video is going to be. I'm scouring eBay. Um, I'm not taking any subscription repairs at the moment. I've got too much on and uh, I don't want to get myself snowed under again. So, but we'll get back to that at some point. But uh, at the moment, I just want to concentrate my own stuff. And there's a few locomotives I'm after on eBay. So um, hopefully we'll get one of them soon. And I've got a few things I want to do to the layout. So I'll share that with you soon as well. Meantime, catch us later, guys.